QuickBooks Online 2024 Accounts Receivable Graphs. Get ready and some coffee because we're off to a quick start with QuickBooks Online 2024. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our crunchy numbers is my cardio product line. Now, I'm not saying that subscribing to this channel, crunching numbers with us, will make you thin, fit, and healthy or anything. However, it does seem like it worked for her. Just saying. So, you know, subscribe, hit the bell thing, and buy some merchandise so you can make the world a better place by sharing your accounting instruction exercise routine. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are online in the browser, searching for QuickBooks Online test drive, looking for the result that has Intuit.com and the URL, Intuit being the owner of QuickBooks, selecting the United States version of the software, and then we're going to verify that we're not a robot. Honestly, it's getting annoying. It's like being asked if you're 18 over and over again when you're trying to get on the same roller coaster. You see my beard here? It's gray. It's gray for crying out loud, and I've been on this thing like 10 times, and you keep asking, whatever. Whatever, I'm not a robot. Reports on the left-hand side. We're going to open up the major financial statement reports like we do every time. In the favorites, right-clicking on the balance sheet. Open link in a new tab. And then we're going to right-click on the profit and loss report. Open link in a new tab. Let's go into that middle tab that we just opened. Close up the hamburger. We're going to change that range. Bring it back to 2301023 oh, tab. 1231023 tab. Run it. That's right, we've got to relive 2023. We're going to go to the tab to the right. Make sure, make, buckle your seatbelt. We're going back to 2023. 010123 tab, 123123 tab. Run it to refresh it. That's the setup process that we do every time. Remember, and these are our major two financial statement reports, that being the balance sheet and the income statement. All other reports basically giving more information on one or multiple line items of these two major financial statement reports. Now we're thinking, hey, we want to present our reports to our clients possibly or supervisors or whatever. And we want some graphs because we want to make it look fancy. Well, the, the QuickBooks doesn't have a whole lot of graphs in the reports section, although they sometimes put some fancy graphs in their analytic areas and whatnot. But if you want to present the reports outside of QuickBooks, then the easiest way to do that and the best way to do that would be to just generate the graphs yourself by taking the reports, exporting them to Excel, and then making your own graphs. You have much more flexibility that way. So let's see how that might happen. Some major graphs that you might look at Usually you would be thinking about possibly the income statement, breaking it out by customer or possibly breaking it out by uh, the things that you sell. But you might do the same with accounts receivable because the accounts receivable has the uh, people that owe you the money. So you might make a simple pie chart that just shows the the people that owe you the money and as wedges of the pie, right? So people owe us 5,281.52. Now this would only be applicable if you have invoices uh, that you're going to be dealing with that you might make a graph. So let's test that out as one we can do. Let's go to the tab to the left. And we're going to go down to the reports on the left-hand side. Close up the hamburger. We're going to go down to who owes you the money. And you'll recall that we had uh, our report here. I just want the standard report that's just going to give me a list of who owes us the money. So we've got the customer balance summary. That's probably the most basic subledger. So let's just right click on that one, open the link in a new tab, go into the tab to the right, and then close in the hamburger. We're going to do a range change up top. Let's just bring it back, making sure it's as, as of the end of the year of 123123. This is as of a point in time type of report instead of a range because it's a balance sheet report just showing where we stand at this point in time. The total comes out to 528152. If I go back on over to 
The balance sheet that should tie out here, 528152, looks Mui B to the N, B N, back to our worksheet. Now, this the easiest report would be if we didn't have these sub accounts. These sub accounts are basically possibly there when we have like uh, a job in there. So now we have we have the parent and then and then the jobs within it or possibly projects and whatnot. So that kind of mess makes it a little bit more difficult. We probably want to see if we can kind of collapse those or remove those items to make it easier. Let's see if we can collapse it in here by using this collapse button. Because if I export it even with this triangle this way, uh, it may still expand the triangle when I export it to Excel. So what if I use this collapse button? Boom, removes it. Beautiful. This is perfect. This is the easiest kind of thing to make a a pie chart or any other a, gra a, a bar chart that we want. We'll just export to this Excel. So I'm going to say, let's go up top and say, dropping it down, export to Excel. I'm going to open that up. Boom. I'll just open it up here. Now I'd like to, we started off putting some reports, balance sheet and income statement reports into an Excel worksheet in prior presentations. I'm going to say enable the editing. And those are here. Now, if you don't have this, that's okay. But I'm going to imagine that we already have this and we're trying to still add some graphs to the worksheet that we're going to be providing to our client, making it look super fancy. This being one of those things that you cannot easily do if you use the internal management tool. So you'll recall when we said we were going to give reports to uh, the client, we can email it to the client and so on and so forth. We can also have the option of making the management reports, which is great but you can't put the graphs in there. If you wanna make some fancy graphs like this, then the Excel technique uh, is one that you, that you might use to try to get everything on one PDF file using Excel and a PDF printer. Okay, so, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this, this one over to the sheet that I have my other reports in. If you don't have other reports, you can skip this step, but I have to have the other worksheet open and then I can just right click on this and move or copy. Move or copy. I'm not going to copy it. I'm just going to move it because I don't need this workbook anymore. So I'm just going to move it to the month end reports. Boom. And then, okay. And then it puts it over here. And then I'm just going to drag it to the right. I want this on the end. And then I'm going to put it on the end over here. Now I'm going to call this, I'm going to double click on this. I'm going to say this is my AR graph data. Now I might make another tab for the data tab and then put my graphs in another tab over here and then hide the data tab so that I can print all these worksheets on one on one sheet. So we'll see that in the future. I'll show you how to do that, but just to get you, a, uh, let you know what the plan is. I'm gonna hold down control and scroll in a bit. And first I'll just clean this up because I all I need is just raw data. I just want these numbers listed out. So I don't need the header. I'm gonna put my cursor on one down to five. I'm going to do this quickly because it's not an Excel course. So I'll just give you the, the idea, the essence here. I'm going to right click and delete it. And then I'm going to delete the stuff below. I don't need the total either. I'll, I can redo the total if I need to. Right click and delete. I'm not worried about messing this sheet up because I can always just redo it uh, in Excel. So and if I mess it up, so we, we should be okay. No need to stress out. I don't need any more stress in my life. Okay. So, so now we can say, let, let, now notice that the formatting here is a little different. We have Arial 8, and this one is Arial 8, but over here we have Calibri 11. I'm going to make it all Calibri 11, which is this default Excel uh, font. And, and so I'm just going to say, because that's the easiest thing I'm used to working with. So I'm going to go to the Home tab, Format Paint This Cell, and I'm just going to paintbrush the whole screen so it's all the same thing. I'll also make it all bold because we're recording maybe that'd be easier to see you've got to be bold when you're recording that's what my producer phil says tells me so i have to be bold in the producing so then i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to adjust the formatting of these numbers as well so i'll select the entire thing i'm going to right click on this and uh format this and then we're going to say let's make it a currency and I'll make bracketed number, negative numbers bracketed. I don't need the dollar sign 
and I want, do I need the decimals? Possibly not. I possibly don't need the decimals, right? Because this is going to be just a graph. And so I'll say, get rid of the decimals. Okay, so there, there it is. So, so now, uh, what I'd like to do typically is to uh, order this from highest to lowest is going to be the next step. So you could just take this whole thing and use your your filters up top. Uh, where are those filters? They're in like the data over here. And you could add filters. I tend to like to put a table in it so that it doesn't because because when I use the filters, I feel like it's going to get jumbled somehow, possibly. So I usually go into the insert and then make a table out of it. So then I've made a table and then that gives me the filtering options up top. So now we have the columns up top. And then the filter so you can call this customers and then ar or something or balance and then i'll sort it from z to a z to a boom and that's basically it now we can just basically make a pie chart from it however if you have a long list of items the pie is going to have too many slices so we're probably gonna have to trim down some of the slices let me show you what i mean though if i select this and we go into the insert over here and then the pie charts are right here. Now note the type of charts that you can put in. You could put a bar chart, standard bar chart here, bar chart up top, uh, but you can also look at the recommendeds and it gives you, you know, some different looking charts. Like this one's a little bit, you know, strange and uh, kind of cool if you want to look for something that's a little bit different, basically a bar chart that's a little different format. But we'll start off with a standard pie chart. So you could do the standard pie chart here uh the, you you could do some of these options this is the 3d i don't like the 3d personally because i feel like it's deceptive because people can try to manipulate which part is bigger by rotating it and so i feel like that's a marketing trick this one is like the newer kind of thing this is the new age thing that people tend to be doing so that's another way to represent uh the pie chart i kind of like that one so uh eh, we can look at that one let's take a look at it the problem with this, however, is there's you see there's, there's too many colors up top, so the the pie chart is not uh, is not really you, we might want less stuff in the pie chart, right? So you might say, well, maybe I'll just take the like the top ten, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Well, let's take the so top seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then everything after that, I'm just going to put in other. So I'm going to say all of this, uh, 1859. So this ties out to 1859. And then I'll just delete all the stuff below it. Does that, is that too much? That's eh, not bad. And then I'll just call all of this other. So this goes into other. And then I can, well, wait, others here. And then I can delete this. And I'll delete these columns in my table. I'll just delete those columns. And so, so now I'm gonna have to reformat my table to pick up the proper area. Uh, let me do it, let me just, there we go. I could just, it's picking up the proper, the proper area. So now, so now you've got a pretty nice looking table, right? Am I right? Looks nice. And then you can change the color up top if you wanted to uh, this way. Uh, you can get into more advanced settings on the left hand side possibly adding the data labels for example so we can add the data labels and then if you want more options uh, on the data label da da data labels you can go into the options on the right hand side here so possibly you want those labels maybe as percentages instead of instead of full amounts so i could say i want them as uh, hold on a second where did I go? We want them as percents. So there it is percent and I'll take away the value. So now we've got the percents and then we might need to change the color. So we could go up top just in the normal formatting up top. And then I go into making it white and you could actually move these, I think as well, if you wanted to physically move them out here and make them black. So you could try to, do that oh oh now i did something crazy to the, to the new fancy chart could move this one out here okay i won't do it to all of them anyways you can get into the detail of the formatting from there's the general idea 
you want to make sure that the total here ties out. So if I looked at this total that I now have the other, it adds up to 5245. So if I go back to my original report here, uh, it was tying out to 5281. 5281. What happened here? 5245. I think I messed up my total here. This should be this equals the sum of this and it should equal 528152 five, 528 let's just say 2 equals this minus this so you would think this would have to be 1896 so hopefully i got that right but you want to and then the percentages if someone asks you about the percentages if you put them in a percent format which is quite common then you could you, you could you could take your totals you might make a total column in our table over here or i could insert and say that i want uh uh well no let's go to the table designs and i want a total row and so it's summing it up here so that's good and then i'm going to make the other one the percent of total i'll say this is going to be the percent of total and then this is going to be now it's picking up see how it picked that up in my data did it pick that up? No, it's not. It changed my table though. In any case, I'm gonna say this is gonna be equal to this number divided by the total. And then I'll format this as a percent. So I'm gonna go home tab, numbers percent, and then I'll sum this up. And so that that's where the percentages are coming from. Now, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna redo this because I don't want the totals, I just want it over here. Okay, so there's my 18%, there's my 12%, there's my 11%, there's my uh, 9%, where's the 9% for the yellow is, is around eight, so it's rounding it a little bit differently over here, eight, eight, and seven, and so on. That's the idea. Now you could, so that's the general idea of it. Now you could pick, a, you could do another uh, type of graph and like I say we might say that we want to insert maybe like a bar graph just a standard bar graph that would look like this right that's your standard bar graph or you can do a more fancy one possibly which is a standard bar graph that might be like you can insert this one you have all these different the side ones down here and then if I look into the recommended it's got this kind of fancy one. So that's a new kind of a new aged bar graph. They centered the bars, <laughs> you know. So we might call this just AR AR by customer or something like that. And so now you've got the amounts by by the total the total amounts there with a bar graph. Uh, I could say uh, access title data labels and so on now I could if I if I of course want the percentages I could take this hold down control and pick up the percent and then go into insert and I can go into my recommended and then I have this same thing on a percent basis so AR percent by customer if you wanted to do it that way but classically, if you want a percent type of thing, then oftentimes you do you do the pie chart if it's a percent of the total type of thing. And then with the numbers, full numbers, you might do the bar uh, chart type of thing. But now the question is, well, I don't really want my data here. I just want the cool graphs on my worksheet. So instead of so what I might do is I might make another tab. So I'm just gonna add another tab over here and put my graph. So I'm gonna cut this. I'm gonna, I can right click and cut it and then put it over here, paste, boom. And then I might go over here. Maybe I just want the one, this one, right click and cut it and then put it over here, right click and paste. And then I'm gonna format this one. So I'm gonna say, let's go into our view on this side and then back over here so I can see the end of the page. So what I what I might wanna do is make the graphs 
Actually, that fits pretty good like that, maybe. So maybe I just make this as large as I can. I'm just going to go to do to there on a page. And then I'll go from here, maybe to there on a page, give it some room. And so then so now you've got your graphs on this page. Now, if I was to do this, this page will still print, which is a problem because I don't want that page. So if I went over there, over here, and I said, uh, I want to print this thing but I want to print all the workbook, including all my reports. There's my balance sheets and so on and whatnot. But then I have this, I don't want that. I don't want that one. I just want this sheet would hatch my cool graphs on it. So what, what I can do then is I can go back here and I could say, let's hide this tab, right click and hide it. And so then this is going to be my AR graphs boom and then i can print all of my reports on one sheet with the cute pdf printer printing i've got the cute pdf printer selected so it's going to print it to a pdf i've got my entire workbook selected and then i can just go through this and say there's my reports they're not totally formatted beautifully because i just giving some examples on the formatting but the point is that then goes right to my graphs i should probably put a header on it and stuff but you get the idea. The idea is what we're going for. If I print this out, let's print it out and check it out so we can admire it the way it should be admired, the way it deserves to be admired. Let's see this. Let's go to close this down and open it up in our PDF format now. So now we have all our reports on the one PDF format. If I scroll down, we've got the balance sheet stuff. And if I can give this to someone, landscape view is still okay because it's reporting uh, vertically and it's not like sideways when you try to open it, which is neat O. And then we have some things are neat, which is okay, but neat O. Neat O is when take, take it up a knot to neat O. So here we have it. Uh, we have our AR uh, circle that we can add couple little touches like that pretty easy to do once you do that a few times and you're gonna and then you'll be heads and toes above the competition with just a few a few little tweaks generally uh and so that's the idea